Welcome to this week's roundup of news and polls from Ipsos Mori as we track the impact of the virus on public opinion and try and bring you up and up to date with all of our activities at this incredibly busy time. With millions and millions of people isolating all over the world, there are some signs that the crisis is actually bringing us together. Globally, in our latest polling, we found that the majority of people saying that it's likely that it will bring them closer to their family and friends. I've certainly personally experienced this with my street WhatsApp group, although it's noticeable that it's stronger in Asia than in other parts of the world. In Britain at the moment, people are more concerned still about the risk to the country as a whole, with about 63% of us worried about that, than our, than our own personal risk from the virus, where only 36% think we're personally at risk, despite, of course, us now hearing about deaths of uh, very young people indeed. Overall, three quarters of us in Britain now say we know what we need to do to protect ourselves from the virus, and that we've heard a lot from the government about it. Uh, that's 73%, up from 46% a week or two ago. So it really has cut through that something has changed. And at the same time, we had before lockdown 50% of the public saying that the government had, hadn't done enough at that point um, to deal with the virus. Uh, we now have a majority of people in our latest polling this week, 56%, who say that the government should have enforced social distancing earlier. Um, that does, of course, skew along party lines with Labour, much Labour voters much more likely to think that than Conservative voters, but it's still a substantial minority of Conservative voters who agree, 44% uh, compared to 69% of Labour voters. So, you know, there will, there will be at some point possibly some blame, although it's also true to say that, of course, in all recent political polling, the government is riding high and we're seeing trust in government and satisfaction with government rising all across the Western world, which again is something that we normally see in times of crisis. However, lockdown is clearly having an impact. We've got eight out of 10 people saying they're avoiding leaving their homes. And that was, um, is up from 50% before the formal lockdown began. We've also seen rises in people shopping online at 23%, doing their banking online. That's gone up from 17% to 27% during the crisis. Uh, and yes, we've gone from 23% early in uh, two weeks ago to 79% now saying they're not leaving the house. And we've got 12% of Britons who now say they're wearing surgical or face masks. So we'll keep tracking that. Eight out of 10 of us now saying we're washing our hands all the time. So really seeing some changes, maybe enough, hopefully, to flatten the peak. We will see um, as the death rate keeps rising and unfortunately is likely to do so for the next uh, few weeks, in, potentially. Six out of 10 of us say we're finding it harder to balance our work and home life during the virus. And of course, in particular, as I noted last week, the under 34s who are trying to juggle often young children with a, with a full-time job are most likely to say that. Uh, and in terms of who's actually got the virus, we found this week that one in five Britons now think they've, they're either pretty much certain that they've had it, which is about 6% of us who say it's very likely they've had it, um, and overall one in five are either very or fairly likely to think they've got it. Now, that is a very, very large number of people, uh, and you know we'll have to see when we actually start the antibody test to see if that number doesn't have a load of overstatement in it. But it, I think what's so fascinating in a slightly macabre way is just how wide the official and academic variations are in the, in the actual potential number of people who may have it or may have had it and been completely asymptomatic. We just don't know. But anyway, there's the number. Uh, one in five people think that they might have had it. 22% say they just don't know, of course, which um, it might be a, a more correct answer. Uh, and the, one of the challenges, of course, is that people still aren't really sure uh, whether or not they could tell if they had it. Uh, and given the range of symptoms, again, you know, not, not particularly surprising. What is clear, however, as the Nightingale Hospital opens in the Excel Centre with up to 4,000 beds for coronavirus patients and similar centres being opened across the United Kingdom, along with mortuaries, is that seven out of 10 of us are now confident that the NHS can deal with the crisis. This is despite stories about lack of protective wear, etc. And that has risen from around six in 10 of us um, two weeks ago. So people really pulling behind the NHS. And of course, you know, you hear people clapping every Thursday night at 8 p.m.
Elsewhere in this edition, we've looked at what brands might need to do and how they might want to communicate in our report on the creative fight back, um, what people expect from brands, uh, what they're expected to do, uh, and you know exactly how they might respond in the most positive way, uh, and well worth a read. And it's clear that some brands do this rather better than others. So Volvo here tweeting, um, stay at home, save lives, right now, the safest place to be isn't in a Volvo. Meanwhile, BMW are saying, be a roadblock of the outbreak and make your own contribution in this rather stylish car. Which one of those works better? You tell me. Um, and then finally, we've looked at the longer term impact of the coronavirus. And so if you go to our Global Trends uh, website, you can see the sort of signals that we're starting to see in terms of how some long term trends may change. We've also found some really interesting long term data that suggests that some aspects of human behaviour literally aren't going to change through hell and high water. So well worth a look. We'll monitor those signals that the that COVID-19 is injecting into our societies. Uh, and you can see that on the website. So here's a, a quick sort of preview. We've looked at um, both how the trends Im are impacted by COVID-19 and indeed the signals that we can see, those day-to-day -day signs of changes in human behaviour. So whether it's, you know, stay the fuck home, stocking up on guns in, Uni in the United States, um, panic buying loo roll, uh, you name it, balcony fitness classes, the future of work, we're starting to look at this and help you think about what your organisation might be needing to deal with as we come out of the coronavirus crisis, in some cases into a very different environment. You can also pick up how public opinion is changing on a weekly or even more quickly basis on our COVID-19 tracker. And here's the link. You can click on that and have a look at that. And um, we will keep going with all of that. We've also launched, for those of you involved in healthcare and pharmaceuticals, our digital doctor survey, which covers 1,700 doctors around the world across 21 countries, looking at how they use digital tools and virtual care to help deal with the COVID-19 crisis. All this and much more, do have a look. Thank you and until next week, goodbye.